What's going on guys, Christian here from CK Raps. Today I'm gonna to do this video on VHT Nightshade, which I have right here, versus Vinyl Wrap for tinting your lights, all right? Um, I'm actually mixing this up with two different kinds of Vinyl Wrap. One is a cl uh, clear, transparent, with a holographic pigment to it, and the other one is going to be a light, a light smoke with a honeycomb and a holographic appearance to it. So we're gonna use those two to tint the lights. We're gonna use VHT Nightshade, which is a very popular product. I've used this product in the past on my own personal car before I tinted, before I wrapped anything in my life. Um, this is what we used. Advantages and disadvantages to this stuff for sure, and I'm gonna go through all of that stuff for, with you guys today. Now, if you guys are looking for exclusive 4K videos on how to vinyl wrap, check out my website, CK Wraps. Dot com. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you where we have a beginner section for those of you who are starting out, beginner one-on-one -on -one section, which I add videos to all the time to get you guys going, uh, open forum, discussion board, that sort of thing. Check it out, links are there. Let's get on to the actual products themselves. All right, so we have VHD Nightshade. Um, you can pick this up at most hardware stores, uh, not most, but some hardware stores. It varies in price. Uh, I'd say anywhere from like 15 bucks a can. I paid $35 for dollars for this on Amazon because we're in lockdown here and everything is shut down. So I had to just buy it there. Uh, sure, I could have picked it up at Canadian Tire, which is you know our hardware store in Canada here, uh, probably for about 15, 20 bucks. And this will get you a bunch of lights tinted for sure. It's not just going to give you enough for one pair. It'll probably give you enough for several pairs of lights. Uh, again, this is a spray on mainly permanent um, way to tint your lights. The products that I'm using here for tinting is the um, basically hex tint with holographic, and this is no tint, so this is clear actually, and I wanna show you what we can do with vinyl wrap versus something like that, because that is definitely limited to obviously zero texture, uh, no holographic effect, and so forth. You're not gonna get that with a product like this. Uh, the other products, this is just a rental car, guys, so uh, don't mind me resting stuff on it. The other product that I'm using is same thing pretty much as the clear, but this is with a light smoke, same thing, prismatic, holographic, whatever you want to call it, with the hex tint, or with the hexagon shape. You're going to need a few things here when it comes to doing all this. Uh, you need your tools, basic tools for actually wrapping the lights. Uh, so we're going to need a squeegee. We're going to need a knife. Uh, we're going to need a heat gun, which you see stuck to the side of the car using a mag strap. Uh, I have a wrap glove just in case. And isopropyl alcohol with a clean rag. That's pretty much it. Oh, and masking tape. So we need to mask off our surrounding area. We're gonna go through all of this today. I'm gonna to tint the lights first. So I'm gonna time them, see how long it takes to do them, and then I'm going to spray them. Um, so and we're gonna talk about the differences between the two. I'm gonna time everything here. So we're gonna actually open up my, uh, my timer here and we're gonna start, let's do this. So right now we're at one second. We're gonna keep rolling the whole time. I'm gonna start by uh, masking. So let's mask off the surrounding area for the lights and I'm gonna do both sides here to be fair because when we're spraying the lights, we're going to be um, spraying both sides. Obviously, we're not just gonna spray one side. I also have this really handy um, tool from Vivid. I'll show you what that is in a second. It's that roll on the top, on the top there. Um, and that's actually for masking off when you're spraying. It's very, it's very, very handy to have. I'll show you what it is. Again, links to the products that I'm using today, most of them will be in the description below. So if you guys are looking to grab any of this stuff, including some of the tints or just regular tints for that matter, uh, check it out, it'll all be there. Let's get this masking going here. We're masking off the surrounding area, similar as we would to um, spraying them, simply because we don't want the film to stick to the other side as much around, those, around the edges. I'm gonna do this side really quick right here and then we're gonna move on to actually wrapping them. Let's try and get this side done. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's very necessary to actually mask the lights, guys, uh, or mask around the lights. You need to use the masking tape to alleviate tension around your edges. Um, and so we can cut and check for tension before we actually cut the main piece of the vinyl. Um, you want to make sure, again, that our edges are, are tension-free before we go nuts and um, cut off the last, last little bit before actually checking to see if the vinyl has tension on the edge. If the vinyl has tension on the edge, you're going to end up with the vinyl pulling back, and we don't want that. So masking, very important. That's done. We're a minute, 45 seconds in. The product, and this is going to kill off some time right here, but the products that uh, I'm going to use for the actual tinting is this pro sorry, the uh, spray tint is this product right here, guys. Again, I'll find the link for it. I'll put it in the description below. This is an excellent masking tool to use, uh, not for wraps, but for like uh, covering things when you're spraying. Let's wipe the uh, surface off. 
And then we're gonna we're gonna tint it. Let's get all in there. Cool. Get it nice and clean. Might as well do the other side. I do have to do the edges still. I'm not really rushing all that much here. I'm just gonna do these as I would normally do them. Both lights, okay? Let's take the cloth, wrap it around our squeegee. Missed our squeegee a little bit, and just get those edges slightly. Just cleans, just cleans it up. Cool. Let's get in there. Excellent, all right. We can toss that. Now, let's take our vinyl. I'm gonna take my piece, I'm gonna size it up. And again, I'm just using these, these colors for fun here. Let's go this way since it's the longer way. There, go about there. We're gonna cut it. And we're gonna cut it to about the size that we need. I'm just gonna rest this here for a second. A little bit larger. We wanna cut it a little bit larger. Let's put this can over here now, now that we've seen it. I'm gonna cut a little bit larger than what we need. Cool. That's good to go. That's about the size and shape of our piece as far as tinting the light goes. There it is. Let's now do a quick little dry. We're at, we are three minutes and 45 seconds in. Let's do a quick little dry there. Let's take our tint now and we're gonna apply this to the flat section of the lens right about there. I'm gonna anchor that down, anchor that corner down, anchor that corner down. Very important, guys, to get those corners anchored down. Let's squeegee out a bunch of this. And yeah, this new stuff feels really nice. I love it, actually. It's way nicer. It's way less tacky than the uh, older stuff from Vivid. All right, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna actually um, contour it around the lens. Then we'll cut it out and we'll do the other side. Let's take that and let's grab it. Make sure you don't put your hands behind the film, guys. You don't want to do that. It will actually um, leave fingerprints on it. You don't want that, obviously. I'm going to pull out some of these wrinkles here without putting my hands behind where I'm wrapping, cool. That's all good. Could have done that a little bit nicer off the, off the beginning there, but really that's just how you do it. Depending on how um, curved the light is, obviously this will vary from vehicle to vehicle. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to cut on the masking tape. And this is what I'm gonna tell you about alleviating tension around the edges. Or this is what I'm gonna show you what we're doing as far as alleviating, ten alleviating tension around the edges goes. So this is what we're doing here. We're cutting on the masking tape to make sure that we can separate all of this and then rip that off and then shrink it down around the edges, make sure everything has no tension on it. It's pretty much that easy to tint your lights, guys, uh, on a lot of cars, not all cars, but a lot of cars. Let's heat up the, all the edges here. All that vinyl is now shrinking down around that top edge. It's perfect, it's what we want. Let's get it all tucked in under here. Good, all the way down to the edge. Make sure our edges are smooth before we cut. Just a little bit of wrinkles there, so let's do that. There we go. Let's do the bottom. Let's get all this. Let's get the very bottom over here. I did cut it a little bit short, so it's a little bit hard to hold on to right here, but I got it. There we go, perfect. I got coverage, it's just a little bit difficult to hold on to. Perfect, all right, let's cut this guy out. And then we're gonna get into actually spraying them right off the other side. I mean, I suppose we could just double the time that it took to do this, let's just do that. Double the time it took to do this, to do the other side. To save ourselves some time here. I don't want you guys watching me, it's gonna be kind of boring to watch the whole thing. But basically, it would be double this time um, to do the other side and get it all done in one shot. Let's do this, cut this off right here. I'm just cutting it off right at the very edge, guys. I know I have no tension, I checked it. Uh, again, that's very important that you do check your edges for tension before you do any cutting. 
You don't have to wrap around the edges a lot. Um, you can if you want to, but I usually recommend that you don't. Uh, usually what that does is it ends up leaving too much vinyl around the edges and then uh, it doesn't stick to something and then all of a sudden it starts looking like it's lifting off. So I usually recommend not doing that. And let's cut right across here. Top edge of the hood. Cool. It's, oh, <laughs> I didn't cut through here yet. I almost pulled the whole piece of tint off. That was would have been a good one. Let's do this side right here. Done. And I just have to do the bottom corner right around here. Helps to have a sharp blade, so always have a sharp blade. Great. Let's finish it up and do the edges. So right now we're sitting at uh, eight minutes and 20 seconds. I'll show you guys when I'm done. I'm not doing any, any editing here, so I just want to show you guys what it is actually like doing this in real time. Go over all your edges. Let's get the top section tucked in a little bit since the gap between the hood and the light is a little bit larger. We can get the rest of that vinyl tucked in there really nicely and it gives us a, an appearance, a very finished appearance in the end. So it wraps around underneath the hood a little bit. Finish up all those edges really nicely like I'm doing right now. Cool. That is pretty much the easiest way to tin your lights right there. That's done. That's nine minutes and 12 seconds. Let's bring it over so you guys can see. Nine minutes. Let's just say nine minutes, okay? Benefit to this, okay? So we have a couple of positives here. Let's just stop the clock. A couple of positives here. Um, one is that, you know, I, ha I can choose pretty much any color. Uh, with textures, I can have a holographic appearance to it. I mean, I can have like all kinds of stuff done with it. Let's just bring the camera in so you guys can see what this actually looks like because you can see that you've get, you get a nice texture with it or whatever you want. Um, you get a cool rainbow effect if that's what you want. I, I should have done the clear one, but whatever. This is just tints. We're tinting anyways. And again, I would double the time for the other side. So another nine minutes and I have the entire front end finished. Like that's with prep, wiping it down and everything else. So all in here, when I cut on the top side of the hood, we actually end up tucking down the rest of the tint inside here. And you can see it gives it a very nice finished appearance. And you can see that you can't see it cut off at the edge. It is just cut, just cut off at the edge, but you can't see that. It looks good. And so the, the benefit to that obviously is we can, um, sorry, we can choose whatever color, finish sort of thing, whatever's available on the market. And then on top of that, right now, when we want to go to take it off, let's just do that. Let's remove it right now. This is the best part of the whole thing is that we can just peel it up from the edge. As soon as I get an edge up, I, I tucked my edges really nicely here. So give me one second. There we go. And when we're done with this tint, boom, peel it right off. That's it. It's done. That took no time to remove. Uh, our masking tape I'm going to remove because we're going to be doing something a little bit different for the VHT. Uh, so again, the light tint just comes right off. Massive benefit here, guys. Let's remove all the masking tape here and then get set up with this. And we're going to spray it. We're going to spray this sucker. We're going to spray this rentals headlights. Because I need to show you guys what that's going to be like. this. I have regular tints here from Vivid, but I figured, hey, why don't you use something cool? Um, just because I can then show you the difference between having, you know, a spray on tint or, you know, using a vinyl wrap for tints and giving you the option to choose something that's unique, um, you know, to your own personal taste and style. All right, the masking tape is off. Just give that 
little wipe around the edge there. Now let's wipe it off one more time. I'm not even gonna count this in the time that it takes to do this. Now I'm probably, guys, gonna time lapse this because at a certain point, it's going to take a long time, all right? Um, but again, we can take the time that it does to do, take, takes to do one light and minus the prep and spray both at the same time. So once we get them both prepped, we can then spray them both at the same time. Uh, so again, prepping both lights over here was nine minutes and wrapping one was, sorry, it was nine, about nine minutes. And then wrapping one was, you know, probably, probably like another eight minutes on top of that. So to wrap one light was about eight minutes after the prep, after prepping both of them. Let's just say it took a minute to prep the sides. Um, let's prep this side now with, you know, with the, with the tint and let's do it that way. Let's grab this and open it up. It's fresh, it's new. You guys are probably wondering how I'm gonna remove this for the, for the, for the return of the rental. I'll show you. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. There's ways to remove it. Uh, all right, let's start the clock. Let me reset it and we're gonna start at zero right now, go. Let's start masking. So this is really cool stuff. As you can see, it has a bag on it. Um, and see, this is the thing with, with tint guys, like no matter how well you mask, you're going to uh, have issues with overspray. And I guarantee you, I'm gonna get some overspray on this car. I can pretty much guarantee you that. But, but this is a really cool product right here. So this is gonna really make it easy. It's got a bag around it. It's gonna mask everything off all at once. And it's also going to um, protect the major part of the surrounding area with this, with this bag that I have going on right now. Okay, so I have to cut this at a certain point. It's, it's bunching up too much. That's all right, we'll do that. Let's just cut it here. Let's just rip it, whatever. Cool, let's get that down. I don't want it to touch my light, so if it's in my way, I'm gonna have to revise this a little bit here. Let's see. Should be okay. All right. Yeah, if you contour it heavily, it's, it's going to uh, touch your area. So we're at a minute and a half just for that. Let's uh, do the top. I'm doing this as, as quickly and as swiftly as I can, guys. Again, this product actually helps speed things up, so it's nice to have it. And I'm just gonna use masking tape for certain, uh, certain areas, like small areas, um, to make sure that I don't get anything on the paint. But again, we know that when we spray, we're going to get overspray. It's, it's a one, almost 100% guaranteed, at least in some area. So you're, you're probably asking me, well, can't we just remove the lights? Yeah, you can remove the lights. You know how much time it's going to take to remove the bumper, then get the lights out? So it's going to take some time. Um, and that, that is, again, a disadvantage. Let's cut this now. There we go. Cool, so that gives us some pretty decent coverage. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more right over here. This is what it takes to mask, all right? When you're, when you're spraying, you have to mask. I don't wanna have to clean up a whole bunch of this stuff off the car later. So we're going, we're doing it as much as we can to ensure that, you know, if, if we're pretending this is your car, or your customer's car, you know, you want to make sure that it's fully covered, especially, especially if it's your customer's car. Uh, last thing you want is overspray on your customer's car. I w I've never done this on somebody's vehicle personally, but I've done it on my own back in the day. Um, did, did do this on my own. Let's put a little bit more over here and uh, make sure this is covered. And then we're, then we're good. Tape just broke, that's okay, I don't need more than that. So we're good, let's cut it. No, I'm probably gonna overspray on my floor, which is not gonna be great, but I can clean it up, it's okay. I'm gonna I explain how to clean all this stuff up, guys. I'm gonna actually show you how it comes off, or a way that it comes off. 
Cool, that's one side prepped. We're at three minutes and 45 seconds. Let's just say approximately three minutes and 45 seconds for the other side. Now, when we're doing this, it's important for this stuff to be at room temperature. You don't want to spray this in the cold. It's not going to work very well. You want to spray this at room temperature um, and not too hot either. It'll just dry too quickly. We're going to have to shake it up. Let's take, take that into consideration here. I'm going to mask off a little bit more because I just want to make sure that certain spaces here are good. Okay, that little spot right there. And then what else do I have down in here a little bit? This is the joy of masking um, when, you're, when you're spraying. Yeah, so like I said, you can take the lights off, but that's a whole other ball game as far as time goes. Okay, I'm feeling better about that. Yeah, that's fine. Give this a good shake. Directions is gonna say it's gonna take about, uh, you, have to shake it, you have to shake it well, thoroughly. And then we have to do coats. This is not a one, a one coat, one shot deal. Let's just check the time, we're at five minutes. All right, let's pop this thing open. There we go. And a bit more of a shake. Uh, you should be wearing some kind of a mask or face protection as well because obviously breathing in an aerosol of this sort is not good for you. I don't have a mask, so I'm just going to spray it. Uh, but again, when you're doing this, technically, yes, you'd probably want a mask. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm not, I don't do this every day. And then the little, the little knob here is a little bit crooked, so I'm just going to try and straighten it out without spraying myself in the face. There we go. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's check it. Make sure there's no big clumps coming out and let's lightly coat this. And usually when you're coating, you come from the inside out and the outside in and so on. Let's come this way. Okay, that's one coat. I am gonna have to let that dry. Um, the time between coats, let's just see while we're here. Uh, it, may, it may say, it may not say. Apply a light coat or just enough to lend changes color. Uh, do not exceed more than three coats or the light may not show through. Wow, all right, I, I don't think it's gonna be that opaque, but we'll check it out. We'll turn the light on. We'll do three coats and see what happens with the light on. So it's recommending about three coats, I would say. Um, covers approximately 12 to 14 square feet. Cures completely in 24 hours. Uh, dries to touch in an hour. Can be handled in three hours, but it doesn't say anything about waiting between coats. So we're just gonna kind of wing it. We're gonna sit here, wait, and I'm just going to time lapse this. I'll bring the timer over and hold it there so you guys can watch what's happening. guys I kind of had enough of waiting here uh, I'm gonna wait but you know I'm, I'm not gonna stand there with my phone in front of the camera I'm just gonna leave the phone on the hood of the car um, I'll check it out let's see what it's looking like uh, I don't know I would love to use my heat gun to dry it but you know what maybe it'll maybe it will work a little bit I'm gonna, this is cheating now okay but maybe this maybe it's not cheating I don't know maybe this is what you can do we'll give it the benefit of the doubt uh, we're already at eight minutes and 50 seconds I don't want to fan it from too close, so we're going to make sure that we fan it from a little bit further back. So right now it has like a bluish tint to it. I mean, it's just kind of what it looks like. I'm going to say, I'm going to say we could probably do another coat right around here. I mean, I got to say, it's not a bad look. Let's just see the other side. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's a little bit bluish, but it's not bad. Let's go for another coat. Let's spray that off and let's do it again. Thinner coats and more coats I find is probably better guys. You're going to get a nicer, clearer result than if you go too heavy. This is looking a little bit better now. Maybe two coats is good. Let's come this way. All 
All right. Just want to make sure it's consistent. Let's do one quick pass around the bottom. There we go. Might have missed the bottom a little bit there. That's getting pretty dark now. Let's just turn the light on and see what this looks like since uh, we're here. Might as well do it. Did I do it? Not bad. Let's, let's look like with the actual light on. Let's see if that works. Is that on? Nope. There, that should be on. All right, that's sort of start, starting to look like uh, what you can see with the tint itself um, and versus the other side. I mean, it's, it's definitely much darker. I would say two coats is probably enough. Uh, I wouldn't do more than that. So let's say we're at two coats right now. We're sitting at 10 minutes, 50 seconds, two coats. Now, yes, I could have done the other side at the same time. So I could have went to the other side, sprayed it, come back, done this, and you know, same thing. So this is the result we're getting with this. How much time have I saved? I've saved approximately six, maybe five minutes because it took me about four minutes to set up just the masking. Um, and it still has to dry, guys, so it's not even ready yet. With the wrap, at least it was ready to dry. So again, you can see sort of what this looks like with uh, both sides done. Let's just bring this over a bit. And I'm going to just turn, close the door. That's annoying. So we saw what the result was with this right here, with this tint. And this tint right here uh, did give us uh, a different kind of appearance, all right? So the appearance in the end is totally different. Uh, we do have holographic as far as the option goes with this. We have an actual uh, texture to it, not texture, but uh, um, I don't know, a, a pattern to the film. Again, you can get this in straight light smoke and get it in dark smoke. This is the, I think I'm pretty sure this is light smoke with the, with the hexagon. Um, you can get it in darker smoke. Uh, obviously the more coats you do on that, you can gauge how dark or how light you want this. It doesn't have to be uh, any particular shade. It's just kind of whatever you prefer, you prefer. Again, it's saying to not do more than three coats. I mean, I can still see quite a bit of light coming out of this, so I don't think it's gonna be a concern, but you know, I think the third coat would probably make them pretty dark, pretty obvious. I think the, the two coats is pretty um, nice. You know, it's classy still. Now, there are definitely pros and cons that are greater than what I've shown you so far. So, with this stuff, guys, all right? So, if anyone's ever done this before, you're going to know. It fades, all right? If it starts to wash off. Uh, you can clear coat it, I suppose. But then, clear coating it is actually going to be its own problem when it comes to... Uh, removing it. So it's going to take more time to remove this off of the lens when you go to, let's say, either resell the car or the cops pull you over and they're like, hey, you got to remove that tint or they're going to give you a ticket or whatever. Because again, doing this kind of stuff isn't necessarily legal. But does that, uh, legal, but does that stop people from doing modifications to their cars ever? No, it doesn't. People put in upgraded turbos, superchargers, whatever the heck else there is out there. And those things aren't really legal either, guys. But hey, people do it. So again, it's more of a personal preference. Look kind of thing, do at your own risk. Uh, it is just tint, it's not really diminishing the light output all that much. I can see it on the wall with all this light here in the shop. I can still see the light output on the wall from this side. Um, so again, this stuff starts to wash off over time. And that is, kind of creates like blotches and doesn't look very nice. While this is not gonna wash off, all right? This is never wash off. The sun might, may fade the pigment over time, but it's not gonna wash off. It's not just gonna come out in splotches and things like that. Uh, so this will, for sure, last longer. On top of that, removal, guys. Do you know what it takes to remove this right here? I'll tell you right now. Brake fluid, all right? Brake fluid works really well in removing this, but brake fluid is very harmful to your paint. Uh, that's why it works to remove this stuff. I've done it before. I, I, the, when I did this on my old car, I actually, um, I, I removed the light on taillights. I removed the taillights and then I used brake cleaner to wipe the taillights off. It did come clean. It came clean really nice. But you do not want the lights on the car if you're using brake fluid on the lens. Because brake fluid, it will eat your paint. And that is really not good. I mean, you can use brake cleaner. You can use like paint thinner and stuff like that too. But again, these guys, these, guys, these things are not good for your paint. Uh, this, on the other hand, is just like whatever. You just peel it off. You saw me rip it off. It took like 
a, you know, 10 seconds to rip off the piece. All I had to do was pick up the edge. That was the hardest part was picking up the edge and then the whole piece came right off in one shot. Uh, even over time, it's still gonna come off pretty much in one shot. You could, I, I had my last tint on my taillights on my last car uh, for over three years and it came off one piece. I'll put a link to that video in the top corner there for you guys as well. So you guys can check that one out. Uh, it came out really nicely and there was no glue, no broken pieces of vinyl, nothing. It came off great. Um, other than that, Again, we run the risk of overspray, guys. So there, is there overspray anywhere over here? I mean, yeah, I can actually feel it. It's on the paint right here. I can feel it. It's all sandy now. It feels terrible. It's all the way over here even. I can feel it. Uh, I mean, for me, it's, it's, all, it's on my hands right now. It's all black. I'll, I'll get in there and wipe it off. But um, it's, no matter how much you mask, you're just going to get overspray. And, and this is really, really, really common with sprays like painting or Plasti Dip or stuff like that. It's very common. Um, again, you're stuck with kind of one option as far as this goes, which is just like a light smoke or, or a dark smoke, whatever you want, while this tint gives you other options as well. Guys, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as the video goes. I'm going to remove this. I have to let it dry now before I remove it, or I'm going to try and let it dry a little bit before I remove it because I think it's going to smear around and make a mess. Let's just see. Yeah, it's, little, it's still wet. So whatever. Um, I'll wipe it off my hands. Don't worry about that. Uh, I do have brake fluid here, so I'm going to use it very carefully I'm going to dab it on the rag and then wipe it off of the lens unfortunately I'm probably not going to get off all of the tints but hey it is what it is no, no big deal anyways guys I hope this video was informative and helpful in showing you the difference between VHT nightshade and vinyl wrapping your headlights in tint um, time spent cost efficiency so forth and so on again all I smell in here is paint right now it smells terrible um, this is not something that you really want to do often uh, especially without wearing a mask you're going to want to protect yourself. Guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Take care.